Proudly we hail. From New York City, where the American stage begins, here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station for your Army and your Air Force to bring you season's greetings. Welcome again to Proudly We Hail. We're especially pleased to present our Christmas program, an original play entitled Keeping Faith. In that day, the land of Judea lay under the mailed fist of Rome. Caesar Augustus was emperor, and his appointed King Herod ruled over the people. In Herod, there was neither compassion nor wisdom, only a certain cunning that fed on his greed, his lust for power, and so made him despised and hated from Galilee to Jerusalem. And so in that day, the people of Judea were sorely oppressed. Though beggared and reviled, their numbers few, their future dark, they nonetheless kept their spirit and their faith. Prophets had long foretold of the coming of a Messiah who would deliver them from bondage, and so they looked to God and awaited the miracle. Most gracious sire. You know, Cyrus, I've often thought of late that one way to remove that grin of yours would be to have your throat cut. But with my throat cut, most noble Herod, I would be of no service to you. The world is full of spies, Jackal. Ah, but none so adept, none so efficient, none so filled with news as your humble servant. And none so filled with modesty. Out with your news before I have it cut out of you. What is the talk in Jerusalem? Who plots against me? The talk, O Herod, is much the same, of a king soon to be born, a messiah. A king of the Jews? <laughs> There's only one king who rules here, and that's Herod. Now, what of this talk of a king? It has long been written and spoken of by their prophets. Is it not natural, sire, that if they cannot find help on earth, they would seek it in their heaven? <laughs> Superstitious rabble. They proclaim a new leader every other week. I like not such talk. This is a strange land full of dark happenings. You crush their bones and kill their leaders. And still others rise to plot and scheme. Do they say where this king is to be born? In the city of David. They call it uh, Bethlehem. It lies to the south. How does this prophecy read? Know you its words? There shall come a star out of Jacob, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel. Believe you this? I believe it not, O Herod. The tribes of Israel are scattered through the mountains like lost sheep. And from the remnant that dwells here in Judea, neither star nor scepter shall rise. The city of David, you say? When? Never, sire. Kings are made on earth. The gods watch over the upper world. Art sure, you spawn of Chaldea? It is so, my king. It is also true that a plot is afoot in Jerusalem to rob the caravan that goes north on the morrow. What? Now, by the gods, why did you not speak of it sooner? When one knows of actions to come, sire, it is of little moment to meet and remove them with adequate force. I took the liberty of reporting the news to your captain of the guard. He assured me that by this time... Why so troubled, my lord? Hmm? Troubled? You speak not, you drink not, and the furrows in your brow run deep. Am I not pleasing to you? Alethea, goddess of Greece. Of all the women I've known, you're by far the most pleasing. I thank thee, my lord. But I must say you do not act like a man well pleased. And my displeasure is not caused by you, but by the fact that I must leave you. Leave me? Why for? For the fear of that 
fat-bellied, murderous, wild pig that sits on the throne of Israel. How dare you speak so, Herod? A fitting description, don't you think? Does he not pay you well for your work? Aye. Or I take my talents elsewhere. It's not money I lack. But now his ears are filled with the voices of his beloved subjects. And fear of what they say grows in his evil heart. What is it they are saying, my lord? Oh, what they've been saying ever since they fell captive to Rome. That a Messiah is coming, a Christ, to free them. <laughs> Rot. But how does this concern your having to leave me? By Herod's orders, I leave on the morrow for Bethlehem, where I shall sit and wait for this Savior. For it is there, according to the prophets, that he will be born. Herod believes such a thing? Herod fears. And when Herod fears, he believes. And to keep my head on my shoulders, I must do his bidding, no matter how inane or wasteful. I would not like your head, my lord, anywhere but on your shoulders. <laughs> how long will you be gone from me? However long it takes me to convince him that his spy Cyrus knows whereof he speaks and that the only emperor in the world is he who sits on the Roman throne. <laughs> May I sit with you? The inn is overcrowded. Sit and welcome. Oh, I'm weary. <coughs> the road is long from Jericho and my stomach craves food. Will you share with me? We thank you, but we have already eaten. Come, come, help yourselves. There's plenty here for all. You are most generous. I am Jonathan, and this is my son, Ethan. A pleasure. I, I suppose, like everyone else, you've come to register for the tax, eh? To be bled by Rome. Ethan... Mind your words. They are safe with me. Have no fear. I have no love for Rome or its taxes. I should enjoy feeding Herod to the lions. Be careful, sir. His spies are everywhere. I have no care for his spies. Here, here. Help yourselves to wine. Who are you, sir? Ethan, have you no manners? It is only fair he should ask. I'm called Eben. By trade, a merchant. By inclination, a brave man. By practice, a coward. And by necessity, a thief. <laughs> you too, Eben, have come to pay the tax? I too. If, if there was only someone to lead us, a champion among men, unafraid. Keep your voice lowered, my friend. What good a champion without arms? We are so few in number. Rome is mighty and we are dust beneath its feet. Mm, uh, how say you, lad? I say it takes but a spark. To light a fire in our Rome as wood for the burning. If we rose up and destroyed Herod, others would rise with us. Well said. Uh, the words of youth. The words of truth, Jonathan. Foolish to speak them. For even if such a thing were possible, we have no leader. Have you not heard stories of one to come amongst us? Aye, so it is said. So it has long been said. He will come. You believe? Yes, I believe. There's a feeling... I cannot explain. Many others have it, and such a thing is not common. A feeling of uh, expectancy, of the breath being held. A feeling of waiting even in the heavens above, eh? Yes, yes, that is it. It's everywhere. He will come. And if you don't lower your voice, you'll find yourself in chains. It is difficult to keep calm over such a thing. I am an old man. And as long as I can remember, we have been an oppressed people. But never so much as now. Always as much as now. Oppression has no degrees. If it affects one man, it affects all men. Father, you know in your heart you believe he will come. I know I am tired, and I have little faith and less hope. Although, upon occasion, I still dream. I tell you this, Evan. Were you to question all in this inn tonight, and all were to speak the truth, they would tell you he is coming, and soon. Maybe this night, maybe the next, maybe in ten, but soon. It is good to stretch the legs a little before lying down to sleep. The night seems overly still. Shall we sit and rest a moment ere we return? As you like. Ethan, are there, are there many like you in your village ready to fight should the time come? Not only in my village. We have formed a league with others close by. We number nearly 200. Hmm. 
And uh, who is your leader there? Zachariah. Ethan. Oh, what is it? Has no one ever told you that a silent tongue is a safe tongue? Yes, but you... I might be anyone. You never saw me before this night. And here you are, endangering the lives of your friends. How do you know I'm not one of Herod's spies? You? Oh, come now, Emma. <laughs> Laugh, you young fool. But remember, if you're going to be a party to revolt, have the good sense to be a silent one. There are stars. Yet the night is dark. Heed my advice, Ethan. No, 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 no. Do not lecture me now. Have you ever known it to be so still? Hmm? Yes. It's almost as though... As though... All creation was waiting. Waiting. Perhaps we had better go back now. I don't understand. No, stay. Stay, my friend. There is naught to fear. Look! Look, the star! Now, by all the gods... It hangs over the inn. It turns the night into day. Can this be? Can we believe our senses? Take me from this place. I do not believe. I do not belong. Christ is the Lord. Oh, praise his name forever. In power and glory. like a man possessed. What's come over you? Is there any need to go stumbling through the night as a star? Never was there such a star. It hung and shone forth like a great drop of silver fire. But don't you see? Hark, hark. Others come from the hills above. What do they hear at this hour? We'll soon find out. Oh, there. We mean you no harm. Who are you? What do you do here? Did you see the star? Yes. We saw it. Know you its meaning? Its true meaning? We know. Tell us, good shepherds. Tell us. So be it. This night, as on all others, we were keeping... Dark and Like a great black cloak. Even the fire gives no light. Our charges bleat not, and yet they sleep not. We've known a night when the jackals did not cry, though. The night will pass, fear not. It is easily said, but the heart beats another tune. The Lord watches over us. If you like, I shall say you David's song. Say it. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. He guideth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they come. Your words are music in the heart of the weary, but the darkness is no less, and, and, and the darkness grows. And what is there in either to harm us? The light! The light! The light! The light. The Lord, you the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord. It came upon the midnight clear, that glorious song of old. Be not afraid, for behold, I bring you tidings of great joy, which shall be to all the people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this is the sign unto you. Ye shall find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. The world in solemn stillness lay to hear the angels. 
manger. Know you where to find this manger. The star shines over it. Shepherd, I... I don't believe it. We don't ask you to. In our hearts, we know the truth. swaddling clothes. How could they know? They told us how they knew. Eben, you're a man of many words, but little faith. But it is beyond belief. Not mine. They, they knelt and worshipped the child. Emmanuel, they called him. God with us. I, I don't understand. I do. Christ the Lord is born this night. Oh, holy child of And it came to pass that three wise men, kings of the east, made their way to Judea in search of he who had been born the savior of mankind, the prince of peace. They went up to Jerusalem saying, where is he that is born king of the Jews? We have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. Now Herod heard these things and was sorely troubled and gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, asking them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophets. You yourself were the first to tell me that Bethlehem was the place this child would be born. Now come these, these wise men from the east seeking such a child. Jerusalem, as well as all Judea, is rife with the news. And you, my trusted spy, you, my all-knowing rogue, try to tell me there's naught to it. Well, speak up. Sire, their own chief priest told you the prophecy was nothing but ancient rumor, which intelligent men of Israel took no stock in. Don't tell me what I already know. You went to Bethlehem, you come back, telling me it was crowded with those who had come to register for the census. Nothing more. And so it was, sire. And so it was, sire. Yet five other spies I sent also returned, telling me of babbling shepherds, of an old man named Simeon who died suddenly in the temple courtyard, proclaiming a son from God had been born, and of a night filled with strange light and voices singing from above. Sire, have I ever brought you information that was not correct to the letter? Have I not proven your most trusted agent? Your other spies are but dogs under your kingly feet whom you must scatter and fling to the winds for all the good they bring you. I tell you, at the cost of my life, that there was nothing in Bethlehem but five drunken jackals who must think of strange tales to find favor with Herod. Well, it's true, Cyrus, you're no ordinary rogue. In the past, you've served me well. I would not enjoy putting you to death unless I were sure you had broken faith with me. Go now and await my summons. My Lord, what has come over you? Never have I seen you so. Pace the floor like a tiger in a cage. Since you returned from Bethlehem, you're a changed man. Yes, I am changed. What befell you in that place? A sickness? No. No sickness. Perhaps I found that I have been sick all of my life. Perhaps I found... Uh, no matter. But it does matter to me, my I could Lord. not explain, Alethea. You, you would not understand. I do not understand myself. There's little to glean from your words. Is the king displeased with you? Yes, he's displeased. I wouldn't wonder he put me to death soon. You say it as though you care now. I care well enough. But my mind... My heart is filled with other thoughts. Which you will not share with me. If I knew how, I, I would. Have you never felt that... that the life we lead is a wasted one? 
that we do little good and much harm, that I, in particular, am an evil man who does an evil man's bidding for the sake of gold. Oh, art sick, my lord. We have no faith, no faith in anything but Rome and its gods of stone, ourselves and our riches. And what else is there for which to have faith? Rome is kind, its gods are lenient. And as for riches, there cannot be enough of them for me. Would that I could make you know what... Yes, what is it? Word has come from Herod, my lord. He demands your presence at once. My court is most honored by your coming, O kings of the east. And we, in turn, Herod, are honored by your royal welcome. I am Caspar, and these are my fellow magi, Melchior and Balthasar. Sit you, noble men. We uh, are curious to know what brings you so far from your native kingdom. We follow a star. A star? Yes, a star which we saw shining in the east. For many days we have followed it, and it led us to this place. What say you to this, Cyrus? Uh, recently, the planets Jupiter, Saturn, and Mars mingled in a display that is most rare. It faded more than a week gone. Uh, how say you, men of the East? We have nothing to say on it. And what is the meaning of uh, this star you follow? We are not tellers of fortune, Herod. But you must follow your star for a reason. We follow it to find a child. A child? What child? We cannot speak further, Herod, until our journey is complete. In what place do you expect to find this child? In the city of David, called Bethlehem. So now. You may go in peace. Go and search for the child. And when you have found him... Bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. Follow them. When they find the child, bring me word. Go now, the five of you. If you fail me in this, you all die. Be gone. Cyrus, come you here. Cyrus, attend me. Cyrus, what? He's gone and without my leave. I'll have him thrown to the lions for this. Guard! Guard! They will not think to seek you on this track. It is little known. You are one of his men, and yet you risk your life to warn us? I am no longer one of his men, sir. But why do you trust me? There are ways of knowing when a man speaks the truth. His spies will be all over Bethlehem. We shall trust to greater forces than those of Herod. In all things, we have faith. You will ride to Herod at once. Tell him the kings of the east eluded us at first, but now we know where they stay. Uh, ask him his wish, should they decide not to return to Jerusalem. And tell him we have seen no sign of the traitor Cyrus. Wouldn't that be better to keep your voice lowered? What matter? Who listens but that blind beggar who is likely deaf and witless in the bargain? Who comes at this hour? A friend, a friend. Good sir, Herod's men know you are here. You must rise and go on your way before the dawn. Did I not know your voice, Cyrus? I would take you for a beggar. It is kind of you to give us warning. But as you can see, we have already had our warning and are about to depart. But who could give you warning? We have had a dream, the three of us. It is enough. But how could... You must not travel the caravan trails. Yes, yes, my son, fear not. We shall take a path where none shall follow, and we shall be guided. Then farewell, wise men of the East. Where go you, Cyrus? To warn yet another. They're gone. But how could they know? Who told them? Did, did they dream as did the wise men? The world is full of miracles. And I have been as a blind man. And now what must I do? Flee this land, save my skin? Herod will be alive with anger. He will leave no stone unturned to find the child, to bring back the magi and to find me. To find me. 
To find me, that's it. I could distract them, lead them away, give them false trails, confound and confuse them. Oh, wonder of wonders. After a lifetime of waste and evil, I have found something good to do. And should I die in this, then I die well. I die for a cause so great, so wondrous, that it is beyond all knowing. For this time shall never die. When Caesar is dust and Rome forgotten, it will hang like a great burning star for all men to see. For all men to know. Hark the herald angels sing Glory to the newborn king Ladies and gentlemen, here speaking for the men and women of your armed services is Chaplain Colonel Robert J. Hearn, First Army Chaplain. I can't tell you what it means for me to be the spokesman for the men and women of our armed services and extend to you their best wishes for Christmas 1952. At this season, it seems to me that one of the important reasons for our feeling as we all do about our way of life is that here in our country, we can say Merry Christmas and mean it. I feel that Christmas has come to symbolize what we and our fighting forces stand for throughout the world. The men and women of our armed forces are serving and fighting to maintain the one great truth that the Christmas story must always emphasize, namely, that God's love for men has given to the lives of all men grandeur, dignity, and worth. May the peace and joy of which the angels sang in Bethlehem's starlit hills sing within your hearts and within the hearts of men of good will everywhere this Christmas day. This has been a special Christmas program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Bureau for the United States Army and United States Air Force Recruiting Service. This is Kenneth Banghart speaking and inviting you to tune in the same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. <laughs>